Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kaylee and today we are back on my island Rubble for another speed build video. If you're new, Rubble is my abandoned post-apocalyptic island and we're getting pretty close to finishing this island. I think after today's build we'll only have 5 more areas to decorate. But today we're going to be making an abandoned junkyard and that's enough talking about the build, let's just get right into it. Alright, to start this build I'm just going to start by laying down some pathing. And I'm just going to connect the pathway from our graveyard to Shep's house, and then a little later on in the video we'll have a pathway that goes through the build off to the left side. Pathing is normally my first step when I decorate because it gives a good foundation to build around, and I do like to spread the decorations on top of the pathing sometimes, so it's easier to lay down the pathing first rather than having to place an item and then pick it back up to place the pathing down again. Now that we have our pathing foundation laid out, I'm going to line this whole area with the big damage variant of the fence. I decided to fence this whole area off because in the movies when they go to junkyards there's usually these big fences to keep people out, and since this island is post-apocalyptic I wanted to have the abandoned and rundown feeling so I went with the damage variant. I love how the fence item looks in this build but they were a little annoying to decorate around. They take up a half tile in width so there were a few times it prevented me from placing an item or sometimes I just smashed it with my shovel, but I guess it was worth it in the end because it does look pretty cool. And now I'm going to start decorating, I did end up decorating from the right side all the way over to the left side. But we are starting off from the bottom right corner and I'm just adding a few trees. And I am going to keep this area pretty simple with just a few items because the fence kind of blocks it off and eventually the fence will be surrounded by other trees on the outside, so any smaller items wouldn't really be seen in this area, so I went with two taller items, the pile of cardboard boxes, and a stepladder. I also wanted to mention that my last two builds on this island have been on the neutral color side, but since this build is going back to the more industrial feel, I will be adding back in the pops of yellow and green. And I wanted to make it look like Shep had a little shed behind his house, maybe this is where he keeps all of his tools for breaking down some of the junkyard items, but to do this I placed two of the grey retro transportation stops facing each other. And then instead of adding a custom design to the back of the retro transportation stop, I just covered it up with the porta potty. I've been dying to use this item somewhere on this island, so I thought this was the perfect spot. And now this area that is slightly in front of and to the right of Shep's house, this area was super frustrating to decorate. And that's because there are a few tiles in front of the house that you can't place any actual items, and then we also had the fence to the right. So aligning and adding the items to this area was super annoying because they had to be in the exact spot in order to move them around. But in this area I was finally able to place a clothesline, a cardboard bed, and a baseball mitt chair. Ever since I saw this item used on Bela's Island, I've been wanting to add it somewhere and it just fit in this spot perfectly. And now we are moving over to kind of the front middle section of this build, and basically I'm just alternating between trash items and a few trees, flowers, and shrubs. I love adding the natural items scattered around my more industrial builds because I think it makes it look super overgrown and abandoned, and that's kind of the whole vibe I'm going for for this island. But this build was super fun and I highly recommend making a junkyard on your island because it's super fun to use some of the items that you never use that just sit in your inventory. So for this build I tried using random items like the street organ and I think they worked out great.
Now I'm moving over to the spot right next to Shep's house, and I think this might be my favorite cluster of items in this build. I just love the retro TV, and just the layering of these different items I think turned out really nice. And like always, I'm adding some filler custom coats to the ground because I like placing my items on top of them. It's just a little detail and the coats are a nice space filler for areas where you can't place an item but still make the spot look visually interesting. I also really like how this back wall came out. The combination of the phone booth and the two construction scaffoldings I think look really cool staggered together. I also like that it brought some height to this build because so far all the items we've used have been kind of small, so it's nice to offset those items with some taller items. Also, the construction scaffolding that I chose, it didn't have the tarp, and I like that because I think it would have looked too blocky with the tarp attached. And eventually behind the fence we'll have a bunch of trees there, so I think it will look really nice to be able to see the trees through the scaffolding as well. In this back corner, I decided to throw down an excavator, and I thought I would like this more than I actually do, so I might go back and swap this out for a different item. That won't be in this video, but I just don't love it there for some reason. We are getting kind of close to the end of this build, but I do have to go through and decorate this last section. And honestly, this is another favorite section of mine. There isn't really anything crazy going on in this area, but I like how the items look layered together. I also completely forgot that there's a golf bag item until I saw someone make a mini golf area on their island, and I just knew I had to add the bag to this build because it looks so cool.
In this area, I also got to use two items that I really wanted to include for some reason. One is the lab chair. It's a super creepy item and it just looks worn down and rusted, which I love. And two is the retro fan. I don't know why I was so determined to use this item in this build. I guess you could say I'm a big fan of this item. After adding this last tree, this area was almost complete. I just had to fill this tiny gap between the hardwood and cedar tree. And then I ran around making a few last minute tweaks to the build. And here is our final build. But that's the end of the video. Thanks so much for watching. Before you leave, make sure to give the video a like, comment, and to subscribe to the channel. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know which item you think is underrated in this game. Bye, friends!